Hello and thanks for tuning in to Cowkind TV. James Preston with you live from our studios in Sydney and this is the Stocks in Action show. In this show we'll glimpse through the developments across the equity and commodity markets. We'll also look at some important sector specific developments and most importantly we shine the spotlight on stocks making the news today. Let's first start with the ASX 200 performance. The S&P ASX 200 dropped 23.7 points or 0.32%. Chalice Mining was down 4.58% and Metcash was also down by 4.39%. Sectors are mixed. 7 of 11 sectors are trading lower today along with the S&P ASX 200 index. Utilities are the best performing sector while consumer staples are trading at the lowest. Having said that, the Australian share market opened the new financial year on a slightly weaker note as lockdowns and movement restrictions in Australia off the back of the coronavirus case surge of the Delta variant are spoiling investor sentiments. On that note, let us take a quick glance through some global developments and their effect on the global market movements. The global equities retraced from their recent highs as Asian markets became worried about a resurgence of COVID-19 cases. In addition, Western markets were cautious ahead of the US jobs report which is due out on Friday which might dictate the future course of action for the monetary policy by the US Fed. All major US stock markets closed quite mixed on Wednesday, the last day of the month, as energy, industrials and consumer staple segments saw modest gains amid a positive economic outlook. Wednesday's session also marked the end of the first half of the year during which the major stock indices recorded double-digit percentage growth, significant progress despite the pandemic. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones rose 0.6%, while the S&P 500 was up by 0.13%. The Nasdaq Composite Index dropped 0.17%. Let's now explore some economic data announcements from the US itself. The rise of equity markets worldwide has been buoyed over the past year by trillions of monetary stimuli by central banks and governments in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Now the success of vaccination drives in some countries has fueled an economic recovery, taking the Consumer Confidence Index to one and a half year highs in the US and 21 year highs in Europe. According to the release on Wednesday, the US private payrolls increased by 692,000 jobs in June 2021, which is more than estimates but less than the 886,000 jobs that were added in May. The data pushed the S&P 500 to a near all-time high on Wednesday, but investors are still eyeing on the more comprehensive US non-farm payrolls figures, which are due out on Friday. Moving on to the next news on bond yields. The yields on longer dated US Treasuries dropped to their lowest levels in more than a week, amid a report showing a solid jump in private payrolls in June 2021. The benchmark 10-year yield was last down 3.2 basis points at 1.45%. Moving on now to the currency space and the US dollar has risen to a two and a half month peak, posting its biggest monthly gain since November 2016. The demand for the US dollar was supported by a surprisingly hawkish shift in the US Fed's interest rate outlook and rising concerns over the outbreak of the Delta coronavirus variant. In the cryptocurrency market, Bitcoin fell 2.56% after rising over 4% just a day before. Dogecoin was down 3.85% while Ether was up by 4.7% on Wednesday. And now it's time to take a very short break but stay tuned as I'll be back with more trending updates in just a moment on Calkine TV. This is Andy Liu broadcasting from Calkine Media Studio in Australia and I'll be hosting the new Calkine Wellness Show. The half hour show will cover topics from how wellness as a concept has become even more significant during COVID to how becoming vegan may improve your health and much more. We are excited to showcase our live streaming show to our audience of millions overseas and in Australia. Tune in to Calkine TV and join me. Great to have your company on Cowkind TV. James Preston with you live from our studios in Sydney and you're watching the Stocks in Action show. Before the break, we were discussing the US market updates. Let's now get back into that spot. In the US technology space, mild profit booking was seen on Wednesday, 
leading to a fall of 0.18% in the NASDAQ 100 after making a record high on Tuesday. Let's now move across to commodities and on Wednesday, gold nodged up but was headed for its largest monthly fall since November 2016 as investors maintained a cautious stance ahead of the upcoming US jobs data on Friday that could intensify fears over the US Fed easing its asset purchases. Spot gold rose 0.4% by noon while the US gold futures closed 0.5% up and outs. The global commodities market also witnessed iron ore futures on the Dalian Commodity Exchange register a seventh straight quarterly gain, despite a slump in Chinese steel mills profit margins weighing on prices in the final trading sessions of June 2021. The most actively traded iron ore futures for the September month delivery on China's DCE ended 0.7% lower per tonne. Copper recorded its biggest monthly fall since March 2020 as the threat of a tighter US monetary policy, a stronger US dollar and moves by China to keep a check on prices pulled the industrial metal from record highs. Benchmark copper on the London Metal Exchange was up by 0.8% but down more than 8% in June 2021 overall. Lastly, on global development, crude oil traded nearly flat on Wednesday amid rising cases of coronavirus in various parts of the world and expectations for a recovery in demand. September delivery crude oil futures traded at 0.04% per barrel, whereas August delivery WTI crude oil futures traded 0.01% up as of the 1st of July 2021 at 10.21am Eastern Standard Time. And now it's time for another very short break on Cowkind TV, but don't you go too far. More updates coming your way in just a moment. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calkine TV. Welcome back, James Preston with you live from Calkine Studios in Sydney. You're watching Calkine TV and this is the Stocks in Action show. Let's have a look at a few recent updates from the ASX listed companies. Starting with the first piece of news and trading in green, copper and gold explorer Native Mineral Resources has inked a deal for the divestment of its Mount Morgan exploration tenement. The company has signed a binding term sheet to sell the project to GBM Resources. As per the agreement, payment of $35,000 to Native Mineral Resources as a deposit fee within two business days from the date of execution of the agreement will have to be made. Moving on to the next piece of news and trading in red, leading supplier of high-performing graphene products First Graphene has released a white paper confirming the novel method for producing green hydrogen and advanced graphite products. Amid growing demand for high-purity graphite due to its use in the production of battery anodes, the technology offers a potential path to cleaner, more sustainable revenue streams for petroleum producers. The next news covers a mining company in the form of Capricorn Metals. It's trading in the green and Capricorn Metals has achieved its first gold pour on the 30th of June 2021 at its 100% owned Kalawinda Gold Project with gold bars weighing in at 12 kilograms poured in the first smelt on site. The first gold pour indicates a significant milestone for the company and the focus is now on ramping up the project into the future movements. Moving on to the energy space and trading green, a leading SAAS provider based in Melbourne, Nossies, along with a special purpose subsidiary, has inked a conditional asset and share sale agreement for the acquisition of Libero business from Libero Software and Insight Informatics. The acquisition is believed to be aligned with Nossies' growth strategy to deliver multiple SAAS offerings under a shared services model. The acquisition is anticipated to be completed by no later than the 31st of August 2021, subject to the satisfaction of certain agreed conditions. Moving on to the next news, and a company that's revolutionising the way of exchanging property in Australia, PEXA is trading flat. PEXA Group Limited's exchange experience is trading flat as an outage on the 30th of June 2021. As a result, members were temporarily not able to log into the platform for a period of more than one and a half hours. 
However, full services were restored by 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time and all property settlements that were in the ready status proceeded yesterday, while rebooking was needed for the remaining properties. In the fourth quarter of the fiscal year for 2021, transaction volumes through the PEXA exchange surpassed the forecast in the prospectus dated the 21st of June by more than 4%. More than 960,000 PEXA exchange transactions were processed as compared to 923,000 forecasts mentioned in the prospectus. All right then, well that's all for now, but stay tuned to Calcio TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on markets, the economy and diverse themes and sectors shortly. I'm James Preston for Calcio TV.